The next proposal appeared as number eight in the proxy statement. It was submitted by the National Center for Public Policy Research. Scott Shepard pre-recorded his presentation, which we will now play. In its statement opposing our proposal, the company speaks out of both sides of its corporate mouth and along the way establishes exactly why a non-discrimination audit remains vital. Kudos to the company for recognizing, at least nominally, that it is illegal and wrong for equity-based programs to discriminate against any employees, whether honored with the label diverse or not. But equity means current discrimination now to make up for other discrimination against other people by other people in the past. And it also means dividing national wealth and power by a racial spoils system, with each racial and other identity-based group getting a proportional share in disregard of individual accomplishment. In support of equity, the company expressly contradicts its recognition that all employees not only have civil rights, but have the same civil rights as all other employees. The opposition statement says that for Walmart, equity is when diverse identity is no longer a determining factor in shaping an individual's life outcome. But if that meant equality of opportunity and before the law, then three cheers. But instead, Walmart is calling for equality of outcome, a spoil system based on forbidden categories of discrimination, which of course means massive levels of current discrimination on those grounds. This is all that can be meant by the development, for instance, of a financial shared values network built with embedded and intentional efforts to advance racial equity. And the racism inherent in the Center for Racial Equity is built right into the name. It might be good business and a kind act to help poor and deserving associates or others who could benefit from extra opportunities they have lacked. It is illegal, racist, and immoral to limit that assistance on racial grounds or to devote shareholder funds in racist ways to create artificial equalities of outcome. Walmart's racial discrimination is further demonstrated by company training programs that have told employees that whites are inherently racist while nine whites are not, and that whites must forever apologize for their skin color and imaginary feelings of supremacy. That sort of employee training is naked discrimination by race. It creates a hostile work environment on racial grounds. It barely dares employees to sue and to win those suits. It creates massive reputational, legal, and increasingly legislative risks. Walmart's embrace of equity theory leads it to use shareholder money to fund frankly absurd actions, such as assessing alternative justice programs that help retailers minimize or eliminate negative inter individual interactions with law enforcement. Walmart executives have a duty to minimize the theft of shareholder property, not to spend shareholder money to keep crooks from standing before the law. This is all very simple. Equity on its own terms means active discrimination on racial and other forbidden axes. In its opposition statement, Walmart pays lip service to the legal fact that all employees have the same civil rights, but then cheers itself about its embrace of equity-based discrimination in myriad ways. Walmart just doesn't get it yet. This audit is vital to save the company and the executives themselves from the massive risks that do and should follow from this new equity-based discrimination.